Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I will be doing a post track check and maintenance on my Shelby GC350. I'll be checking the car for any current issues or anything that I can catch before it becomes an issue. I'll also be doing an oil change using AMS oil which is right here, a brake fluid flush which is right there. So this post maintenance will be done about every third track day or so. This is to keep the engine and components healthy. I also wanna make sure that any wear and tear items are wearing out properly, but most importantly, this is to keep things safe for myself and my car. All right, let's not delay what we need to do, and let's get started. First, garage door open. Second, you probably can't see it, but we need the Raptor out of the way. Third, GTR out. Fourth, GCG 50 in the center. Fifth, garage door closed. 6 GC350 in the air. Now that it's ready, I'm going to open up the hood so we can get started on the oil change. I think I have everything ready for the oil change. I also went ahead and removed all four wheels just because it's easier for me to get in and out from under the car. Plus, I needed to do it anyway since I'm doing a brake flush. So now let's move on and do the oil change and then a components check. Now the oil change is complete. I've done it before, so nothing difficult about that. Same process as any other oil change, really. The car currently has 3,500 miles, so it's been 2,500 miles since the last oil change I did. But since I've taken it to two full days and one half day at the track, it is recommended to do an oil change just to keep the engine healthy. I've read that you're supposed to do an oil change after every single track day, but I'm sure I'll be fine. You may have noticed I didn't oil the O-rings and that's for a specific reason. Long story short, I met a Ford engineer around October of last year and he happened to be testing the Ford GT500 engine inside of a Shelby GT350 shell, which confused me because I thought it was a 2019 GT350 when I saw both of them parked. But this particular engineer 
worked on the Voodoo engine when it was released and he recommended that I don't oil the o-rings on the oil filter housing and the reason for that is to avoid the possible loosening of the filter due to the high vibrations of the engine. He did close it with it may or may not happen but he recommended I don't do it so he must know something but anyways time for the components check. Okay so now let's start checking the tires and start with this left rear. So it seems to be pretty good. Seems to be wearing out pretty evenly. I don't see any concerns here. And the inside of the tire seems to be wearing out pretty good. So it seems like the alignment is still good. Let's go check the other ones. All right, let's see. Okay, so this seems to be pretty good as well. Even wear, which so far so good. I'm pretty glad. All right, so now let's go to the other side and check these two tires. Hopefully they've been wearing out even two. Let's start with the right rear. Yeah, pretty good. Even wear, wow, this is so good. <laughs> I'm so glad. And the inside of the tire again seems to be wearing out pretty good as well. And the last one. Oh, let's get it off of here. Okay. <laughs> So, yep, same story. All right, so now, since the tires are good, which I'm so glad that they are, then let's go ahead and move to checking the brakes and rotors. Okay, so I'm gonna be checking the brake pad life first. I'm starting in the left rear, and I'm going to be using this tool. I really like this because this has three different colors, green, yellow, and red. So green means that you're pretty much good with the brake pad life. Yellow means that it's okay. Depending on where you are on yellow, you still have a bit more of life on the brake pads or you probably need to look into replacing them pretty soon. And red means that you should have been replaced them. I'm thinking I'm probably going to be somewhere in the yellow. Let's see, but let's go ahead and measure them. I'm just going to start off with the green one, work my way down. So I'm just gonna put this on the brake pad and measure it. That's too much. It's a little bit too much too. Okay, yeah, so this one seems to be just right. Oh, let's check the other one. Oh, yeah, that's the same. So I am at the last screen and that is eight millimeters. So there's still some good brake pad life on it. All right, so now on to check the rotor. So I'll be using this caliper to check the width. And here it says that the minimum thickness should be 24 millimeters. So let's see where this is at. Okay, so 25.8, let's try somewhere else. And this one, 25.8, all right. So I guess that's pretty good. Seems to be almost like new. Now let's move on to the left front. Okay, so now in the left front, let me rotate it towards the camera. So you guys can see. Okay, so now I'm going to start checking off the brake pad. Okay, so, yep, seems to be the same as the other one. So it's in the last green one. Let's check here. So the same, so again, eight millimeters. So there's some good brake pad life. Now, let me rotate this back and check the rotors. So for this one, the minimum is 34 millimeter thickness. Let's see where this one's at. Okay. 
Okay, so this one's 35.8 millimeters. Let's check somewhere else. And the same 35.8 millimeters. So these are still good as well. So now let's move on to the right front. Okay, so let me rotate this one towards the camera as well. Let me start with checking the brake pads. I'm just going to take a wild guess and start at eight millimeters. <laughs> let's see if it's the same. Yep, so eight millimeters and eight millimeters. All right, so we're good. Now let's check the rotors. Again, the thickness should be 34, well, the minimum, 34 millimeters. And it's 35.8 millimeters. And 35.8 millimeters here. So it's the same as the left front. Now let's move on to the last one, which is the right rear. Okay, so now the last one. Again, I'm gonna start with eight millimeters. <laughs> yep, eight millimeters. And the same eight millimeters. So we're good. Now the rotor. So once again for the rear, the minimum thickness should be 24 millimeters. And it's 25.8. And 25.8, so perfect. So. That's good, everything seems to be wearing out evenly. So now I'm done with the components check and I'm glad that everything is fine, everything is wearing out evenly how it's supposed to. I don't have to replace anything yet, but after my next track day, which will be sometime in February, I will be doing another components check. So I'll be checking the rotors, the brake pads, and the tires. I'm not sure how long, how much longer they're going to last me, but we'll see. And I won't really have to worry about replacing the liquids because I just did an oil change, so I'm good with that. So right now, I'm just going to clean up and let's move on to do the brake flush. So I have my power bleeder and I'll be using it to pressurize the system and I'll be connecting it to my brake master cylinder. So I'll be setting it to around 14 PSI. Then I'll just be doing a walk around the car just to make sure that there's no leaks. I did see a video on this and I thought it would be a good idea to do a walk around. So I'll just be walking making sure that there's no leaks from the calipers or the brake lines. If we're good to go, then I'll go ahead and start the brake flush. So I went ahead and did my walk around and there were no leaks, so we're all good. We can go ahead and start on the brake flush. So let me show you what I'll be using. I'll be using this Motul Racing Brake Fluid. So the GC350 calls for 750 milliliters, but I'll be using a liter just to be on the safe side in order to do the system flush. So I'll be pouring this into the power bleeder, then I'll be pressurizing the system back again to 14 PSI so we can go ahead and start the bleeding process. So I read some documentation and it calls to start off with the right rear side first. I'll be starting off with the inner bleeder and then just work my way out to the outer bleeder. Once I'm done with this side, then I'll move to the left rear side and I'll be using this 11 millimeter line wrench. 
and also this 11 millimeter shorty wrench and i'll also be using this container i'm not really sure what this is called to be honest but this is where i'll be flushing out the old fluid <laughs> big fail the brake fluid just started squirting up and i started freaking out so i just went ahead and closed it i'm not sure what that happened why that happened but i think after seeing the container it had a straw inside so i went ahead and removed it hopefully this won't happen again so i'm gonna go ahead and try it again but there was so much brake fluid that came on i had to clean it off <laughs> all right so take two now So I'm finally done with the brake flush. Now all I need to do is depressurize the system. So I'm gonna start by doing that and just releasing the air slowly from the power bleeder. Then there might be some excess fluid in the brake master cylinder. Ideally, you would wanna have like a syringe in order to remove the excess fluid, but I don't have one. I have, well the closest thing that I, that I can work with right now is these eye droplets. <laughs> so, I'll be using this to remove the excess fluid. It might take some time, but this is the only thing I have to work with. And then the final thing is, I actually saw a Auto Fanatics video where he did a brake flush as well, and he used something that looked like a Capri Sun straw. <laughs> At least that's what it looked like to me, but I don't have one. The closest thing I have is this pointy tool. So basically what I'm going to do is just insert this in the bleeder and then excess fluid is going to come out and I'm just going to wipe it with a paper towel. I'll do that all around the car on all bleeders and then I'm done and then I'll just cover it with the rubber nipples. So let's go ahead and get started. Almost done. Now I just need to turn on the car to charge up the system and get some brake pedal fuel. I'm also going to leave it running just to get it up to temp because when I did do the oil change, I only poured nine and a half quarts. I'm sure it needs 10, but I just wanna get up to temp and better be safe than sorry. So now let's go ahead and do that.
Just kidding, I'm still not done. So everything turned out fine and I did need that extra half quart of oil so I poured that in. But now this place is looking just a little bit of a mess. So I need to clean that up, put the wheels back on, lower the car, and then I'll be done. So I'll be back. I'm done cleaning, the wheels are back on, so now I am finished. I would say that this wasn't hard, it was just a bit time consuming. So I'll be checking the liquids after every third track day, but I'll be doing the components check after every single track day. Now the only thing that's missing is washing the car because it's extremely dirty from after the track, but not in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys on the next one.